as the updates. A few the seven five release uh, we've had SASD before. You've all worked with it. Uh, the, the look and feel has changed a little bit. The, there's a few extra buttons uh, and good features added. Uh, I'll show you what those are in a few minutes. Uh, the wall launcher now. This replaces the unattended uh, mode we had before. Also includes uh, the wall configuration as part of the uh, wall launcher. We have a new SASD federator now. Uh, so uh, Lionel showed this uh, in session one on how you view a feed from multiple vSOMs by creating a single view through the vSOM web UI. You can do the same thing through the SASD federator. Right. I have a SASD video player. This is essentially a light version of SASD with uh, maps uh, and alerts. Right. It's only used for a video viewing. And we'll see a demo of each of these uh, quickly as we go forward. This has been improved quite a bit. And uh, I will show a demo of uh, how to troubleshoot if we have enough time as we go forward. But uh, a nice little tool for uh, tag to, to get uh, all the you know, all the requests which are being made uh, while using SASD. So do a demo of SASD and come back to virtual clipping. So just open SASD first. Up. Every time you log into SASD, it does ask you for the login side. We saw reverse, but SASD will ask you. Um, so I'm letting it know that I'm not in any site. So if it was go look at any feeds in the remote location, it would actually go through the dynamic proxy server over here. Right? So I am seeing that I'm not in any site before I log in. Yeah. This is the new UI we have for, for SASD. We have the video tab. Uh, this is using standard uh, location tree to browse through videos, right? Uh, got your lay and play with it. Uh, this has all been there. It's a slightly different view. Uh, so you, you can do that. Um, you can call and push, publish them all. So this gives back uh, some of the VSVM functionality we lost, right? So I'll just publish that to a wall, and when we see the wall launcher, we'll, we'll see it there. Right? That's a way to, to do that here. Uh, we continue to have the alert-centric view, um, ability to search by location, devices, severity, all that is there. Uh, see all your alerts here. You can jump to the um, right trick video from here as, as well. Uh, Matt, we saw this yesterday. Uh, the the interface for this. Um, you know, so I just want to go to a different location. I just can browse through that from the maps. Uh, the good about the maps is that the interface here it remembers the context. So if you look at the alerts below, I've selected SJC28. It's only showing me the alerts from. SJC 28, right? So that's the nice little way for operators to browse the cameras they have as well, right? So we went interfaces yesterday, so I will not go into the details of that today, right? But, uh, you know, you have nine cameras set up here, uh, and we saw how to do layering of the maps uh, and have our cameras on layers over there. Um, new forensic analysis. And motion analysis we saw yesterday and how we use the metadata server to do after the fact motion. Uh, management, we'll come back to this when we talk about virtual clipping and we continue to have the thumbnail search option as well. So that's what it looks like. Not a lot of differences except uh, our maps were static before. We are able to do GIS maps through SASD now and the UI is a bit more improved with another additional option for forensic analysis. Let me wall launcher. Actually, go to the configurator. Uh, 
employees begin as an operator. So, uh, the VSVM we had in the past, right? You launched this on startup. I created a lab view which we pushed to the wall before. So if I do that and launch it, you see the fields which we had set up for our lab view before. Right? So simple. We can select the geographic uh, spatial coordinates uh, where it pops up uh, with a couple of here. Uh, couple more options. You can uh, choose to open that up, maximize mode always. So that will fill up my screen with those videos. Uh, and the launch startup option, you can always have a view going which you want to track the new wall launcher feature we have through SASD. And let's take a quick look at the SASD. Coming up, very similar feel to the uh, basic as the coming's missing. Uh, we talked about not having maps here, and uh, now push to wall. So get a view here and populate that with uh, cameras from different VSOMs, right? So different uh, VSOMs being managed by the federator. This is which been doing for using analytics testing. That is associated with a particular location over there. The remote server, so I'm getting a feed from the remote server. It's going to dynamic proxy, which is why you see the attempting to reconnect. You will see the feed in a minute. And there's a Lionel's test server, which is our view from the code team today. So that is what you can do with Federator. So no maps. You cannot save uh, views from here. Uh, but if you just quickly want to check uh, and create views out of different VSOMs, uh, you, you can do that <laughs> the same interface. You just saw nothing fingers in the first video. <laughs> All right. Uh, last as the option is as the video player. So this is. of SASD, uh, we cannot do maps and alerts. Uh, so again, uh, this asks us to choose where we are on. So every SASD client asks you for the location where you are before you log in. Right? So uh, same thing, your main SASD, you do not have forensics from here, you do not have maps, you do not have um, alerts. So you're not using uh, those features, if you're only using, if you have an operator who, who uh, you want to only line access to, or even recording viewing, just viewing access, you would use this player. Uh, this is free version, I believe. There are costs associated with uh, getting SASD. Uh, this is something which is not clear out of in the field. Uh, SASD has a right to use certificates. So if you have your customers using SASD all over the place, make sure that you charge them for that. Um, it's a decent amount of money.